My name is Stephen Weisbord. I'm from the VA Pittsburgh Healthcare System and the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine. This is a C. Jason podcast that will discuss a study from our research group published this month in the journal regarding the management of depression in patients receiving chronic in-center hemodialysis. Past research has shown that depression is a very common condition in patients with end-stage renal disease receiving chronic dialysis. While small prior studies demonstrate the potential efficacy of antidepressant medication and cognitive behavioral therapy in this population, it is presently not known if patients want to receive and renal providers are willing to implement treatment for this condition. In this study, we examined patient and provider acceptance of treatment for depression. Our study was a secondary analysis of data collected as part of a multi-center clinical trial that was comparing strategies for the management of depression and other symptoms in patients on chronic hemodialysis. This parent trial enrolled 220 patients who completed monthly assessments of depression using the PHQ-9. In one arm of the trial, a trained nurse evaluated the patient's monthly PHQ-9 score, and if that score was 10 or greater, spoke with the patient and, when indicated, offered evidence-based recommendations to the patient on treatment for their depression. Specifically, the trained nurse either recommended changes to ongoing treatment or starting new pharmacologic and or non-pharmacologic therapy. If patients accepted the recommendation, the nurse communicated with the patient's renal provider, and if the provider agreed, facilitated the implementation of treatment. If the patient did not accept the nurse's recommendation, the nurse asked the patient why they were not interested in accepting the treatment. These assessments allowed us to determine patients' willingness to receive treatment for depression, the reasons they did not want treatment, and provider willingness to implement such therapy. Our study population was comprised of 39 patients who on at least one monthly assessment recorded a PHQ-9 score of 10 or greater. Overall, these 39 patients completed 373 monthly PHQ-9 assessments, of which 147, or 39 percent, revealed the presence of depression. For 103 of these 147 assessments, the patient was receiving antidepressant treatment, while for 44 of these assessments, the patient was not receiving antidepressant treatment. For 68% of the monthly assessments in which depression was identified, the trained nurse recommended a change to current therapy. However, patients refused the nurse's recommendation in 73% of cases. The primary reason patients cited for refusing a change in antidepressant treatment was attribution of their depression to a recent illness, chronic disease, or to dialysis. In 19 instances, patients accepted the nurse's recommendations, which were then communicated to the renal provider. However, more than 60% of the time, providers were unwilling to implement the recommended treatment. Most providers did not provide a reason for not accepting the nurse's recommendations. For the 44 assessments in which depression was identified, but the patients were not on antidepressant treatment, patients did not accept the nurse's recommendations to initiate treatment in 91% of cases. The primary reason they cited was also attribution of their depression to a recent illness, chronic disease, or to dialysis. This study demonstrated several novel findings. First, a substantial proportion of patients on chronic hemodialysis is receiving antidepressant treatment, yet still has PHQ-9 scores consistent with ongoing depression. Second, most patients with depression are not interested in changing existing treatment or starting new treatment, principally because they attribute their depression to a recent acute illness, chronic disease, or to dialysis. Finally, when patients accept recommendations for antidepressant treatment, their renal providers were commonly unwilling to implement the recommended therapy. We acknowledge that our study was small. We used the PHQ-9, which assesses depressive symptoms and does not diagnose major depression, and the nurses who recommended changes were not members of the dialysis treatment team. Notwithstanding these limitations, we believe that our findings are important in that they highlight important challenges to improving the management of depression in the dialysis population. What is clear is that future research is needed to better understand the effectiveness of antidepressant treatment, pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic, in this patient population, and to more clearly elucidate patient interest in and provider willingness to prescribe such treatment if determined to be effective. I would like to acknowledge that our research was supported by an award from VA Health Services Research and Development. Thank you very much for your time and interest. This podcast is copyrighted by the American Society of Nephrology, all rights reserved. All content in this podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be medical advice. 
This podcast should not be used in a medical emergency or for the diagnosis or treatment of any medical condition. Please consult your doctor or other qualified healthcare provider if you have any questions about any medical condition or before taking any drug, changing your diet, or commencing or discontinuing any course of treatment. Thank you for listening to this podcast of the American Society of Nephrology. Thank you.